Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to start the new Mosaic Damascus Bowie build. Let's get right to it. Okay, let's talk about the Damascus pattern for this knife. So I'm going to go with something kind of bold. Um, so it's not going to be a, a ton of layers. Uh, I think total layers is um, 23 layers, but a couple of these are doubled up layers, uh, which is going to give us our mosaic. Uh, if you're curious on how to do mosaic, I'll put a link up in the corner to uh, a video I just released a little while ago about intro to Mosaic Damascus. One key to Mosaic Damascus is that there's different thicknesses of layers, and that's what gives you your pattern. So I had to be really careful in setting up the billet for this. As usual, I'm MIG welding the corners of the billet just to keep it together. I don't like to run a line of MIG weld down the side just because then I have to grind it off and stay tuned, you'll see that becomes a problem later. I always have people ask me what this is. This is kerosene that I dip the billet in just to make sure that it seeps into all the seams and I get a good forge weld. Once I've got it up to forge welding temperature, I take the billet and the first press, I just gently press on it just to compress it just a little bit to set the weld. I'll repeat this for two more heats until I'm sure it's good and welded before I get aggressive and start compressing it. I like to grind off the MIG weld just to make sure I don't get any in the billet. Because it's on the corners, I probably don't need to do this, but I still do. For this pattern, I'll be forging this down into a square bar, not a flat bar, because I need to square off the corner, so I want it to be square. This is what it's going to look like. I'm going to start the layers in this configuration, squish the corners, then I'm actually going to re-square right in this heat. I'm using the squaring dies to square off this billet, and then I want to stretch it out because I'm going to have to cut this into four, so I need this billet to be pretty long. You can do this without squaring dies and just use flat dies, but this sure makes it easier. As you can see, I had a little bit of a problem here. This isn't good and this has to be ground off. I started grinding on the 2x72 and realized I was just wasting belts, so moved over to the angle grinder. After a few minutes with the angle grinder, I managed to grind all of that off and it looks pretty good. Now back to the forge for one more heat just to square it off before I cut it up. So here it is after the first forging. Uh, the only thing I'm a little concerned about, if you can see that, is that I'm not quite getting the pattern, at least on the end. And you saw that I had a bunch of um i don't know what it was i think it was i think i actually burned the steel a little bit because the end of the forge that this was in was a little hotter quite a bit hotter so i think i burned a bunch of the steel so i had to grind that down 
So I will cut the ends off it, take a look at the pattern. Um, it just might not be quite as pronounced as this, but we'll see. Here's that new Wen metal cutting saw. I just did an unboxing and a review of this one, so you can check that out. So that's what the end looks like after being etched. Pretty good. Let's look at the other end. Yeah, so pretty much what I wanted. So let's cut it up, restack it into four, get it back in the forge. For these mosaic patterns, you gotta make sure you get your bars in the right orientation. So I always like to draw on them and number them so that I know exactly where they go. Now it's time to clean the touching sides so we can get our forge well nice and clean. Here's where I learned a new trick by first doing it the hard way. I wanted to make sure I sealed this whole thing up so I welded all of the seams including the sides and that presented a problem and you'll see why. The problem here is as soon as I put this in the squaring dies, it squished that weld into the seam and pushed it in deeper than I wanted. I had to grind that out. I didn't show it here, but it wasn't much fun. The good thing that came out of this is I learned a cool technique that I'll show you in the next forge weld that I do to combat this. Like in the last forging, I want to forge this out into a long square bar because I'm going to slice this up and do the same thing that I did already, cut it into four and rotate it. As you can imagine, Forge welding this by hand with a hammer is virtually impossible. There's just so much you would need to do. Uh, you really need a forge press to do mosaics. I want to make sure this is as straight as possible with as sharp corners as possible since I'm going to be forge welding this back again into a square. I'm pretty happy with the pattern here. It actually looks pretty close to my drawing, so uh, it turned out like I expected. Now it's time to clean up the touching edges again, egg weld them together, and then get them back in the forge for a forge weld. So here's the trick that I learned. After I did the MIG weld, I went to the grinder and ground down the MIG weld. So really, there's just a really thin layer over top of the seams, but that's enough to keep the air out, and that's all I need. All the scale coming off while I was forging it on the press, I think took all that MIG weld off. But if it didn't, it certainly came off when I grind it in the next step. Here it is after forging the uh, mosaic. Looks really good. Now I gotta slice it up and tile it. And then we'll get our pattern. So here it is after it's cooled down. I've ground opposite sides because I'm gonna cut it 
on angles like this in the tiles and these angles, these faces rather, are the ones that are going to meet up. So uh, I'm going to actually do this in the bandsaw, we don't lose as much material. So let's cut it up into slices like this. So I've got all of my mosaic tiles all cut up. I've ground these edges here that are going to touch. So I got six tiles out of it, which is pretty good. You can see, and they're pretty thick, maybe three quarters of an inch. I'll show you what the pattern is. I, um, I etched one tile. If it'll focus. Come on, there it is. So that's what it's gonna look like. I think it turned out really well. And this is what I'm going to use as my end piece here. Okay, I've got this 16th inch um, mild steel that I'm just going to weld them to. Weld this on top, weld all the seams so I get a nice airtight weld. Let's do it. This is a really important forge well, so I want to make sure I get this one done perfectly. I want to get this one really hot. It doesn't look like it in the camera, but this one is really, really hot. After setting the welds, I noticed my billet was getting pretty long and I didn't really need that. So I started putting the fullering dies sideways so that I could get some width out of it. Now I'm pressing down any peaks and valleys caused by the fullering dies and then a final flattening just so that I have a nice solid billet to start with. Hey folks, that's it for this one because I'm out of time, but I think we got a really good billet, um, a really big billet actually, so I'm pretty happy with that in case something goes wrong on either side. Uh, I'll show you what we're forging, which is this guy. It's uh, an eight inch, sorry, a nine inch Bowie, um, hidden tang. I have enough steel actually to do a full tang. So we'll see, maybe I'll change my mind. But stay tuned, check out the next one. We're gonna turn this one into a knife. Thanks folks, see you on the next one.